Greetings, fellow sojourners, and welcome back. I hope you're sitting down, or at least not too far from your fainting couch, because these will be the most risque episodes yet. Mostly because we're going to be talking about what is and isn't risque by examining the biblical notions of modesty, decency, and propriety through the cultural lens of fashion, nudity, and art, and pornographic relativism. I'm Pastor Shane. I'll be the fashion police today as we appropriate some culture. <laughs> I realize I'm a bit of a fashion icon with my firm-fitting, interchangeable, solid color t-shirts, but not everyone can approach fashion with the same sort of casual confidence as mine, with a look and style that both inspires and reassures that somehow simultaneously is both timelessly classic and nonchalantly trendy. It's a gift. But for many Christians, my playful devil-may-care attitude with fashion eludes them. For them, the devil does care. A lot. And so does God, and so should we. In fact, the way others dress, or the way we use the fashions, is a source of tremendous consternation and judgment in Christian circles. People have very strong feelings about how fellow Christians dress, and their haircuts, and piercings, and tattoos. But as we said in our extensive episode on judgment, which if you haven't seen it, how dare you, you're a terrible Christian and probably going to hell. But if you have seen it, you'll know that God is the judge when it comes to the eternal condition of man. And we're only called to judge fellow Christians and only in regards to sin, not in regards to disputable matters. If you're curious how we arrived at that biblically, uh, go back and watch or listen to that episode. So to think through this issue, we need to see what the Bible says about it. We are given some instruction on how to dress, 1 Timothy. I also want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. We talk about women a lot more on this issue because, frankly, both men and women are far more interested in how women dress. But there is a clear biblical command here, dress modestly with decency and propriety. So we have a call as Christians to dress modestly. That seems pretty straightforward. But again, this is one of the issues that becomes more challenging in application because what is and isn't modest is cultural. Every culture has modesty standards, but it varies from place to place. In some cultures, the women go around topless, like the Koma or Kambari tribes of Nigeria, or the Cinema tribe in Venezuela, or the Hamar people of Ethiopia. And they're not being immodest. Their culture just has a different modesty standards. In other countries, like strict Muslim nations, women are immodest if they go out in public and are not dressed as a terrifying ghost. In less strict areas, a head covering is sufficient for a woman to be modest. In our culture, a head covering isn't needed to be modest. So we have a biblical principle to be modest and decent, but what is and isn't modest and decent is dependent on culture. Christians ought to be modest and decent in whatever culture they are in. But what makes things really complicated is that not only do modesty standards vary from place to place, but they also change over time. Here's a look at ladies' swimwear from 1915 and ladies' swimwear from 1945. That's quite a change, and that's just 30 years. These things can happen within a generation, which is why there is so often a generational divide when it comes to fashion. You know, when I was growing up, that wasn't modest. And now it's rampant, and I am uncomfortable. And these changes don't just go in one direction either. You know, we talked about those tribes that are more bearskin friendly. Well, there were a lot of tribes and groups like that that modernized and changed. And that too caused generational strife. You know, grandma, put on a shirt. So embarrassing. Fashion and dress and modesty standards are cultural. So when it comes to our fellow Christians, we shouldn't rush to judgment. Did you see what she was wearing? He wore shorts and flip-flops to church. He wore brown shoes with white socks. And because it's cultural, it's often debatable. And so we should approach these issues with a lot of grace. Now, I do think that Christians should live comfortably within the accepted cultural norms. I don't think that Christians should be pushing the envelope or be the avant-garde of the fashion revolution. Some things are unnecessarily on the edge and create conflict among Christians and within the church. And because you live in this culture, you know what that is, right? It's, it's too short or 
it's too low cut, or it's too see-through, or it's a Patriot jersey. And those are things that Christians really shouldn't wear. There is freedom in Christ, but don't abuse your freedom. Now, modesty as a principle is not only about the sensual. In 1 Peter, it says, Your beauty should not come from outward adornments such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. And Paul said something very similar in that 1 Timothy passage that we looked at. Now, is there something intrinsically wrong with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes? Well, no, probably not in and of itself. I think it's driving at something deeper here. There's a modesty beyond how much skin is showing. Maybe another way of saying this is don't be gaudy or tastelessly extravagant. Gaudiness does seem in contrast to modesty. And oftentimes, fashion is nothing but a means of vanity, of puffing up your image or flaunting your status. Here's a lovely brown leather handbag. It retails for $24,500. There are payment options. I'm sure it's quality, but it's a bag. You put things in it. Time for a rant. I was once stranded in my own home. My wife took the car the day before and the van the following morning, which meant that somewhere in the bowels of her purse were the van keys, the car keys, the spare keys, and the cellular phone that she refused to answer. But my stay in solitary confinement afforded me time to ponder, and though it may be a controversial statement, the fact that women have stuck by the purse should be grounds to disqualify them from higher office. For how can you be trusted to manage the country when you have embraced the worst possible personal management system in the world? A system which is essentially, I'm going to throw my important items into a dark void and pray to God that I can find them again. Now, I realize that purses have compartments, zippers, and an attempt at organization, but that's a facade that quickly vanishes when you are inevitably standing behind a woman in the checkout line who is desperately plunging through an infinite abyss in search of a debit card. I would have a game show called What's in the Purse, in which the contestant, without looking, must accurately identify everything that is in their own purse. So, for instance, if my wife were to give the answer, all of the keys in the universe, she would get a point. No one would actually win, but we'd all learn a lesson. Oh, and I'm sure there's a chorus of women shouting, their purse is super organized. That is not true. Basically, there's only two options. Number one, you have, you have streamlined your purse to such an extent that you've rendered it unnecessary. Or two, you have 20 items or more jingling around in a sack. And a sack, by nature, is not organized. When I see a person rummaging through a sack for their personal effects, they're usually homeless and or crazy. And I certainly don't look at them and think, gee, they got their act together. But we substitute plastic for leather and suddenly we think it's a great idea. So what we have here is a $24,500 sack and why would anyone pay for a $24,500 sack? My entire editing rig doesn't cost that much and it can do far, far more than hold loose items. So the price tag isn't about functionality. So what is it about? Well, part of it is art. It is a work of art. You know, oil on canvas does nothing, but the work of the artist creates the value. But there's another reason something like this can retail for that price, and that is identity. We buy more expensive clothes partially because of better quality, but more because we want the brands. And speaking of brands, you'll be thrilled to hear that I'm launching my very own clothing line, which is our sponsor today. Appropriating the Culture is brought to you by Chester Tees. Each Chester Tee comes with a pithy and poignant quote from G.K. Chesterton himself. Look good, feel witty in a variety of styles, colors, and quotes for every occasion. Turn heads and change minds. Get your Chester Tee today. That was very on brand of me, wasn't it? And brands are a huge thing when it comes to our identity. I'm adorning myself in these kinds of clothes with these kinds of accessories because that's the kind of person I am. I'm fashionable, I'm stylish, I'm wealthy, I'm important. How we dress, how we accessorize, how we present ourselves communicates who we are. But the Bible says don't adorn yourself with elaborate hairstyles, gold jewelry, or fine clothes, but rather with good deeds, with the inner self. That's our identity. You're a woman of God. You're a man of God. That's who you are, not your clothes, not your hair, not your jewelry. Clothe yourself in righteousness. Identity runs deep in this. 
It's not simply about having a good product. Advertisers know this. It's about you. How does this product make you feel? Are you important or are you a loser? L'Oreal Paris had that slogan, because you're worth it. Be mindful of getting your worth through what you wear or basing your identity on how you present yourself. There's nothing wrong with being fashionable, but so often fashion is about image. And the image that we are meant to bear as Christians is Christ, not Prada, not Gucci, not Louis Vuitton, Christ. Well, we'll delve more into this next week. You can reach out to me with your questions or comments on the usual social media avenues. In the meantime, clothe yourself in righteousness, put on the armor of God, and go appropriate some culture.